Welcome to the Meridian Centre in St. Catharines, Ontario, home to the 2021 Canada Summer Games. This afternoon, we feature game number four of the CEBL Summer Series between the Fraser Valley Bandits and the Edmonton Stingers, two teams playing their first game of the second season of the CEBL. Thank you. Welcome inside the Meridian Centre. I'm Jason Tom, alongside Joe Razzo. And Joe, I'm really excited about this matchup from Western Canada. Yeah, so am I. I just think we've got two teams here. One that has an identity because Coach Jermaine Small and the Edmonton Stingers, the majority of the team has been back. And, and they're a, a real team with solid Canadians. They're a physical team. And they may have the two best imports who know each other in Xavier Moon and Travis Daniels. So you've got something, a, a little bit of a constant. And then on the other side, you've got Coach Kyle Julius and the Fraser Valley Bandits. And he's got a little bit of a consistency because he brought in guys. He made a team of guys that he's coached. And in coaching those guys, what he's done right off the bat is they know where his standard of play is. So the relationship he has with them in a short period window of time, he's done that with a group of guys where he's had success in Taiwan at the Jones Cup. He's trying to emulate it, I think, over the next three, next two or three weeks. So I like these teams because they know each other. The players know each other each other and uh, we've got two different styles we got a physical style here in Edmonton and we've got this dog style where they're gonna just be tenacious on defense in Fraser Valley gonna be competitive we're gonna take a short break here again we have Xavier Moon the MVP of the league as well so stay tuned we'll be back to introduce you to the third member of our crew we'll be back after a short break most of our clients who come through our door and who are suffering from mental illness, they're feeling a sense of despair and a longing for help. Often, insurance companies are denying disability claims on the basis that there's insufficient medical evidence. We've represented hundreds of clients who suffer from anxiety or depression. We fight for our clients' right to receive the compensation they deserve. If you've been denied long-term disability, don't give up. We can help. Your long-term disability firm, Kotak Law. Send it over to Amy Otterberg, who is with head coach Jermaine Small. Finally getting the ball in the air. Well, first and foremost, I'm just be, we're just happy to be playing, and you know, we get, you know, testing to the league how much hard work they put in. But no, I mean, we brought back our core. We feel really good, and after camp, you know, our new pieces are gelling in really easily, and um, yeah, we're just ready to play. I wanted to ask you specifically about Xavier Moon, the CEBL MVP from last year. He comes back to camp. What did you see from him, and where is he at as a player? Yeah, I mean, um, he looks even better. Um, like I, I thought, he was really fast, and he looks even faster. But um, you know, he's ready. You know, we, we both have a, a little bit of a bitter taste in our mouths from last year, and we're ready to go. And he, he, he look, he's ready. You look happy. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy. I'm really, really happy. Buddy. Coach, we're gonna let you go get this ball up and get ready for the game. We'll go back Thanks to you, Jason. Thank you, Amy, and yes, I know Jermaine Small has been waiting to get back onto the floor, didn't know if this was actually going to happen at some point, so he is very excited to have an opportunity to get back to where they wanted to go, which was the CEBL championship game, and you know, it's, we mentioned it off the top when we were talking about keys of the game for these two squads, kind of different, but at the same time, some similarities. Yeah, absolutely, but... The fact that you know each other and you've been together for a team and the roster knows each other and the key players know each other like that that makes familiarity becomes a huge advantage i think for edmonton um, in that and i mean the other part of it is i think finding your personality for fraser valley is a huge part of it. as you evolve as this tournament evolves you will find your personality and it's not your personality when things are going well it's find your personality when things aren't going real well You'll find your leaders, you'll find, you know, our people jump and ship on you, whatever. All those things happen with a brand new team in the first game of the series. Because I think this will be a tough series for anybody to go undefeated. So you've got to make sure that you stay together throughout the trip. 
one of those things too that you need to be peaking at the right time. And you know, Edmonton's one of the teams that actually doesn't have two days off at any point during this you know summer series. And that's something that they have to kind of have in their minds. It's a good thing that they are deep. And when you look at the starting lineups for both teams, Fraser Valley has got Marcus Capers, Malcolm DeVivier, Cameron Forte, Kyle Johnson, and Junior Kadugan. That is a lot of size, no matter the position. And then on the other side, Xavier Moon, Jordan Baker, Machu Kamba, Bambi, Diawara, and Travis Daniels. Again, two teams that have a lot of different size, but in different ways. Yeah, absolutely. And and the one change in the Edmonton lineup is Mambi Diawara. Uh, from their lineup over that, that they've had over the year, like over from last year. And I think he brings them a little bit of size and a little bit of athleticism. And it allows them to have maybe one of the best six men in the league, a deep, Adika Peter McNeely to come off the bench. It's going to be very, very interesting. These two teams, Cal Julius with an opportunity here with Fraser Valley to be able to coach here back at home as you take a look at tonight's officials who will again be using these whistle-less whistles. Is that the best way to put it? Electronic no? whistles. There you go, electronic whistles. I knew you're, that's why you're here. Buddy. And man, I tell you, you know what? These things were made for COVID. There's no hand-to-mouth situations, and there's no aerosol, so everybody feels safe. Remember that, or sorry, a reminder that the official game ball of the CBL is Spalding. Get your new CBL official replica ball today by visiting cebl.ca, and it is a beautiful basketball that they're using out there. The Fraser Valley Bandits in the burnt orange. It's beautiful, whatever it is. The home team for this one, the Edmonton Stingers, led onto the court by Xavier Moon. That is a name you're going to be hearing early and often in this game. The Stingers in the yellow with white trim. I liked how Coach Small said he was smiling when he was talking about Xavier Moon. He's smiling. There's six other coaches in this tournament that are just frowning when they talk about Xavier Moon. He <laughs> is an impact player, and he's, and he's a solid, solid player. You're going to see Fraser Valley giving up height in a lot of different ways, but three seconds in, they got a bucket under their belt. And that's exactly what Coach Julius is excited about. His team was thinking on the opening tip and stole the jump. I didn't even get my rosters out in time to be able to call this because that happened so quickly. Cal Julius caught me unprepared. He would not appreciate that. Move no good. Junior Kadugan with the rebound. They are pushing are the Bandits. They're going to run in every opportunity they have. Down low in the post. Foul on the hip. And you can see real early right now that Camp Forte is going to be something that they're going to look at. They're going to play through him as much as they can. He took a shot early, right on that hip pointer. Anybody who's played the game at any level knows all about that pain. Tough start right there for him. Could do get back up top to Forte. Gets around Jordan Baker. Nice little drive and finish. Lefty's good to go. Made your move. Baker. Tiawara. Pull up three. No good. Rebound to Vivian. And I love the way already we've seen two transition situations by Fraser Valley. They push the ball with the dribble and look for the open man, but they don't walk it up the court. Nice look down low. Forte, no good, gets his own rebound, puts it right back up. And he's showing you, the lefty's showing you what he's got, but he's got a real good right hand too. He's a natural scorer in the paint. Early 6-0 lead here for Fraser Valley as they're getting out early and often. Edmonton looking to answer. No good, good defense. Foul called down low, gonna go on Marcus Capers, I believe. Often early in the game, you're gonna get a lot of ball screens because teams want to get a read on how their other team is playing it. And right there, as they came off the ball screen and got the switch, then they decided to attack it. And good offensive rebound by Travis Daniels, who may set the widest screen in the CBL. He takes, he's got huge shoulders, and I guess you can only go shoulder width apart by rules. He is the widest, most stationary screen we have in this league. Yeah, he was a presence for the Stingers last year in their run to the CBL championship weekend. 
the Bandits, like I was saying, they have size in a different way. Their guards are just so wide. Like, it looks like they've been living at the weight room down at the team hotel there for the last eight days. And like, these guys are just built different. Portek working on Baker. Baker is country strong himself. Pulls it down. And that's the matchup that they want. They don't want to put Daniels on him because they don't want Daniels to foul out. But Jordan Baker is one of the most physical players. Achukamba checks in from the land beyond. Cut the lead to two. 6 4 here in the early going. And off to Dugan, the veteran Canadian national team member. Pull up three, no good. Rebound goes away of Fraser Valley. Baker got a hand on it, couldn't save it. Right back to Forte early and often. So long rebound, run down, chase it down, give you a second chance opportunity on that. Good play by Fraser Valley. Baker. Mm. A little miscommunication there. Baker was looking for a little backdoor feed, but not to be. Kyle Johnson did a real good job defensively of taking away that feed, anticipating it, and he caused the turnover as much as anyone. Interchangeable parts when it comes to bringing the ball up. Fraser Valley can really call on anybody to do that. Cadugan. See Brody Clark in the game for the Stingers for the first time. The corner three, cash money, Kyle Johnson. That weave, just the movement of it, got Kyle Johnson open there for a little bit. Cadugan found himself back down by Brody Clark there and got the early foul call. Clark has already signed to go overseas. Yes, yes, and the, you know, this is perfect. The fact that he's now going to have two CBL, one full season and a series under his belt, and, you know, five years of new sport basketball, he will be ready. He's physically ready. Absolutely. Tough pass to throw there. Transition, Vivier. Off glass is good. Fraser Valley having no problem on the offensive end right now, up nine. And just pushing, pushing, pushing. Ooh. Spent his time getting everybody else involved so far. Deacon Peter McNeely out there off the bench. Looked like that was all ball up top, maybe calling it on the body. But what I like is already on their defensive series, the bandits are nothing but communication. Everybody's talking. Doing a real good job of communicating the situation. Much like in every other game, <laughs> the horn went just as the free throws get lined up. But I thought, I thought last year Peter, uh, Deacon Peter McNeely was one of the best players, maybe the best sixth man in our league, a starter on any team. But he just brings them energy because he can play at multiple positions at the guard spot and defend multiple people. Again. 20. Cody Clark started the game on the bench, saw what Forte was doing, gets on the floor, what's the first thing he does? I know where he's going, I'm going to step in and draw that. Ball. Absolutely, and a guy like Cam Forte, what you're doing is you're fighting for real estate early. Like, you can't let him get you low, because he, he's not a three-point shooter, he's an inside scorer, both hands, but you got to fight to make sure that he's taking a longer shot. We've already talked about this, about who starts and who ends. I'm just sitting here realizing now that the league assist leader from last season, Merrick Classic, coming off the bench and the But that's somebody who's bought in. He's saying, whatever you need to do, coach, I don't start. Yeah, and you know, and Merrick, Merrick, talk about somebody who pushes the pound of the ball. He can push the basketball. Yes. And he will find open shooters. What a luxury to be able to have him coming off the bench as your backup point guard. One of the lone bright spots for the game this last season. Tough first year in the CEBL. Pass move. Pass up the layup. Kick out. Well, what do I know? Kick out to the three, and it's good from Malcolm Vivier. Always looking. I agree with you. I thought he had a pretty good length in the basket, but he's always looking. With the steal, Vivier. Look at his teammates running up the floor to help him up as soon as they can. 
So Malcolm's known as a shooter, and all of a sudden on this team, you just can't be an offensive player. You've got to be a dog on the ball. And he did a real good job of anticipating. And then checking into the game, James, and I got Head coach Kyle Julius says he thinks that Menega is the best Canadian that people don't know about in the CEBL. Well, I met him in high school. He was part of the NIDA program. And I thought he, big things were going to happen. When he went to Creighton, he had a great career there. And uh, let's check in with Amy Audibert, who we talked to earlier in the game. Amy, what he got? Well, Coach, you talked a little bit about Kyle Julius in the opening, the way he formed this team when he was hired in December from Taiwan, where he was coaching pro. And what he told me earlier this week, it's exactly what you're seeing on the court. He said, obviously, we needed talent, but I went after my dogs. And my gosh, he said, I was not, he's not scared to play small to get up and down. You look at the way they start, they have really bought in to Coach Julius to start this one off. Forming defense, thank you, Amy. Third member of our crew always coming in and dropping knowledge on us. Vivier, front rim no good, move with the rebound. And that is Xavier Moon, the flash flying up your screen there. That if you see a yellow blur at any point, that's Xavier Moon. And one of the things that the Bandits are going to try to do is stop transition basket. That's where Edmonton is restrained. But you saw that last series. The Bandits did a great job in the half court of on the ball defense. A lot of body banging down low, and it's Forte past Baker. And Baker did a good job of making him start outside, but it's Forte's ability just to push back a little bit all the time. Boom, crossover dribble drive. Out of bounds. Stay with the stink. Did you see how quickly the Bandits came back and covered down on that? We got our first media timeout of the first quarter. Fraser Valley came out and smacked Stingers in the mouth are up 13. We'll be back after a short break. Welcome to PayWorks. We're payroll, HR, and time and absence management experts. So whether your business has thousands of employees or just one, let us show you how we're different. We're PayWorks, and we're doing business to business, person to person. Follow the Fraser Valley Bandits on social media right now to get the latest news, updates, and behind-the-scenes access that the Bandits have to offer. Follow the Edmonton Stingers on social media right now to get the latest news, updates, and behind-the-scenes access that the Stingers have to offer. official merchandise partner of the CEBL. Visit the store at cebl.ca to pick up your favorite team here. Really tough to find a favorite. New Era did such a great job with all of this merchandise. Make sure you can check it out at cebl.ca or any of the team sites to direct you the right way. Foul in the corner and they're gonna say three free throws from Nandi DOR. What we saw there to start play there after the timeout was uh, the Bandits went to a zone. Fraser Valley attacked it inside real quick, fought on the boards, got two good bass, two boards on the kickup. And now they're, they're, they realize after that timeout, they got to try to match the same intensity that the Bandits came out with. If you're looking at Fraser Valley, Cameron Forte, eight points on four of six shooting there in the early going. 8 of 12, Fraser Valley came out 
from the field, only four guys got shots. They had a game plan, they had a focus, and they executed it. The stat that jumps at me is the fact that they've got, they went 7-0 on points off of turnovers. And so they not only are they forcing turnovers, but they're running out after them. One thing to be able to run out and get baskets in transition, but you have to be able to do that defensively as well. Well, Edmonton still down double digits. Porte, once again, he's letting everybody know, you don't have anyone who can stop me right now. Great combination of a guy who likes to go left, but can finish with his right with that spin. Nice little bounce pass drop off the way of Brogan Clark. Classic. Has it on a string, but little push off on the ar off arm. And Diora's little flop. Everywhere in basketball, if somebody gets into your personal space, we all find it aggressive. Someone in the bed, Deacon Peter McNeely, gets into your space all the time. of Corey and DeVoe. E.J. David Joseph down Dugan to a pocket pass. Sorry, and Nick still good from range. Long rebound. Forte comes up with it. Steal. Here, head coach Kyle Julius wants a timeout. He saw his double digit lead come down and he immediately wants to talk it over with his crew. What they did get out of that was they got a long rebound and they did a real nice job of getting a second chance opportunity here with this baseline out of bounds that they're going to have a chance to set up. We talked a couple of times about you know, Kyle Julius as the coach, but Kyle Julius the trainer. My conversation with him, which I found very interesting, was you know, he said, Jay, taking a look at every roster in, in this league, I got a minimum of three guys on every team that has spent some time in the gym with Kyle Julius in the offseason. And I say that only because you know, basketball circles here in Canada are so small. But on top of that, when you have somebody like that teaching that sort of attitude, you and I talk about all the time, what is the identity of Canadian basketball? And I think we're starting to find it. Just guys who give it their all no matter the position. We give up height and weight sometimes but you're never gonna outwork any player. Yeah, and then the big thing with training guys and being successful is to train them in game situations. It's not a matter of shooting shots, it's gotta be competitive. You gotta compete against yourself. You gotta, you gotta start developing that attitude. And ultimately, that attitude is accountability. If you just can't go in the gym and be satisfied knocking down 50% of your shots, you gotta get over to the next level, and then you gotta make them real shots. So that's what he's done a real good job in, in his training, and he's used that because they get the guys he trains are the guys he wants. Back to game action, Kadugan inbounding. Foul called. Tiawara, I think, picking up the second. Zach Overwater checking the game for the Stingers. Nice baseline out of bounds on that. It's a late, sometimes baseline out of bounds plays go on the first second or two. That was a late one because what they wanted to do was they wanted to get a screen and they got a switch. And therefore, we got a nice post up, easy pass. And you got you got the right guy passing the ball in Junior Kadugan. If you're open, he'll find you. Up top, and that's an open back. For people not aware of the feeble rules, once the ball's in the front court, either with a side out of bounds or a baseline out of bounds, you cannot throw it into the back court. It's funny, I've been calling FIBA games for so long from the high school level and everything else that it, I'm so used to it at this point. To go back when I watch NBA games now, I get thrown off. Down low, Baker fires into the corner. Always ready to pull the trigger. Kadugan tries to come down with it, saves it from going out of bounds. Menega, transition. Vivier. Ooh, that's going to be a charge. Lots of contact and bodies in the floor of this one, too. That's the second turnover Adika Peter McNeely has caused on defense, taking two charges now in this quarter, getting his team back in the game. 
three minutes left here in the opening quarter. Fraser Valley jumped out to an early double-digit lead. They've been able to maintain, even though their offense has hit a bit of a wall here. Overwater, kick back out to McNeely. Push off, back the other way. Making it easy for the officials so far today in the first quarter. And what you saw there was the Bandits went to a 2-3 zone, just trying to change it up. And sometimes when you do change it up, you slow teams down because now you get them thinking a little bit. And all of a sudden, you, you haven't now affected the tempo of the game of what they want to do. And that's, that's why you see uh, the defending champs throw the box in one, making guys think. Dugan up top, wide open. Junior knocks him down. That's a big three for the Bandits. Junior, you know, always been a decent shooter, but now the confidence of the open threes he's had today, he took. That's a big play for them. Fraser Valley just swarming on the closeouts. Right there, though, the Stingers, the best rebounding team in the league last year, getting back to what they do best. Baker now. Not his shot. Out of bounds off of Baker. Fraser Valley get the rock back. So part of them going zone with the Bandits might be just as that for timeout or because Xavier moves off the court. Hand off Menemann. Olu Ashley in the game for the first time today set the screen. And he's down low asking it for the junior. Those two know each other from a long time together. Foul on Overwater. So that was real nice. You know, we watched Cam Forte back his way in. Olu faces up, takes a dribble, and then spins his way in. And both with the same result, starting outside and getting closer to the basket. <laughs> spent some time in Japan and it didn't take long didn't take long for the uh, close relationship between Jermaine Small and Kyle Julius having a little conversation here this is what I came for the basketball is one thing but the relationships we have within this league both teams get warmed and I just had to bring it what Jermaine Small was saying he was like Junior Kaduk is my son I mean we're from the same area we chat all the time. We were sending emojis back and forth before the game, talking, talking trash. Oh, ball. Daniels, good D. Kadugan ends up on the floor. Peter McNeil, mid-range game deadly. And Edmonton's been at its best when they're scoring transition or on their secondary. Nice pass. It would have been a tough one if it was a turnover, but it was great to Kadugan from Menega. It was a nice pick and pass because it was a great catch. Good junior Very with the big point. hands. <laughs> you only you can only throw that pass to certain guys. Junior's one of them. Under a minute to go. 13 point lead for Fraser Valley. Corner. Daniel. Oh. I didn't know he had that in his game. Oh yeah. The no thing is, he has I think that's the first look where he's got the ball out of the offense. That's scary. I knew what he brought when it came to the physicals and the basketball idea. And answer back, Menega from the land beyond. And a nice solid double screen on the baseline to get him open. Well run, real quick and efficient. Peter McNeely, just a two second difference game clock, shot clock, and that time will run off after May Baskets. So we're just going to move on. Healy. No good. Oh, they left a little bit of time. Dugan got to launch it. Not happening. 32 points for Fraser Valley in the first quarter. They're up 13 after the opening 10 minutes. We'll be back to St. Catharines after a short break. What is 100 years? In 1920, Earhart Cook turned a passion for headwear into the new era cap company in Buffalo, New York. But everyone was making this kind of hat. So we came up with the big idea to make the best caps for the biggest sport. But something wasn't quite right. 
we wanted to show the logos with pride. And just like that, the iconic 5950 was born, changing the baseball cap forever. For the first time, the caps the pros wore on the field were officially sold in stores. And then something unique happened. Spike Lee called, the Spike Lee, and asked to have a red Yankees cap to match his jacket. We asked Major League Baseball, and they said, we had a chance to be disruptive. Spike's red cap launched sports headwear into a wider culture. Hip hop made this staple. Creators made it their own. Colors, fabrics, patterns. It was more than just your favorite team. And a gold sticker on the visor became as iconic as the cap itself. And those four numbers, we think it's an original production number. We don't know for sure, but we love them. From courtside to Crenshaw, from the 50 to 5th, it shouted that this is who you were, what you repped, and where you lived. The world saw it and wanted it. Where were we? Staying true to our roots. Fans of all sports became fans of us. People liked what we were doing, so our brand grew, and we became more than just a cat. That's 100 years. We thank you. Enjoy what comes next. Quarter action at the Meridian Center brought to you by Ward One Studios, the national video partners of the CEBL. Also, I have to mention, as part of the CEBL social justice work, you will hear players, coaches, and staff speak out against racism. Simply because racism is not our game, it's featured at each baseline as a reminder of the work we all need to do for equality in Canada and the CEBL stands with its players against racism in all of its forms. The Bandits right there did an absolutely great job on defense. They just played straight up. An honest D did it. Baker saves it. And the guy comes up with it. Four Bandits outside the three-point arc. It's a good thing Kyle Johnson hit it. Yeah, and that started with the 50-50 ball. That thing goes up, and then and the bandits first to the ball. Then hands on Baker. These two were just monsters on the glass from the last season. Boom, down low. Clark. Brody Clark. That was smooth. He can, Brody can score a bunch of different ways, but I think when he gets into the paint there, that's his, that's his strength. The rating. Sports player of the year. Last year battled injury, but still had a great learning experience with the Stinger squad. Forte almost came down with it. Looking for a whistle, not there. Xavier Moon has been quiet, really focused on getting everybody else involved. The MVP with the Rock right now. Mid-range jumper, no good. Brody Clark cleaning up the mess. Get to the line to shoot two. One of the reasons he's been quiet right now is because the band is doing such a good job in getting to a half-court defense. I think the strength of this Edmonton team is scoring in transition, but you can if the other team does a great job of getting back. We said that Fraser Valley would be trying to get out in the open as often as possible, but getting back in the other part of that. And because they run so often, they're going to have to cycle through their bench. Amy Otterberg, what you got down there? The free throw right there is Brody Clark. Just behind him at half court, his teammate, his mentor, also for three years his assistant coach at the university at Alberta. And Brody Clark said that the, the dynamic hadn't changed because he says, that's my mentor. Jordan Baker is the guy that I've been chasing into the weight room and following and doing summer workouts for years now. And to get out on the court with him, it, it's nice to just have him there. Very, very cool. That's what the 
FBL is all about, Amy, is the fact that two players like that who are connected at the esports level now here playing alongside one another at the professional level. level. George Baker, the Golden Bears goats, if you will. Brody Clark trying to go after that title. There's a foul on the three attempt. Menegat will go to the line to shoot. Nope. Yep, shoot three. And that's a momentum break because they played real good defense the last couple of series. Had a good run out. And then all of a sudden now you play good defense again. And that foul just takes away from that defensive momentum, that confidence that Edmonton was building up. That was, uh, as you were saying that, I was looking at head coach Jermaine Small. He had the look on his face is exactly what you, the words you were saying. It was an absolute killer, especially when you send a shooter like Menegat to the line. It's, to go to Creighton, you have to be a good shooter before you get there, and you become a better shooter after Creighton. A couple, couple decent shooters out of that program. One of the things on the free throw line is the Bandits only have one player, and when you only have one player, you're allowing the defense to may attack the rim on a missed free throw, or when the ball hits the rim. So by not putting two players in there, you're giving one defensive rebounder an opportunity to run, run at the rim and try to knock off a free throw. One of the reasons they were back is they were sitting in that, they wanted to get in that 2-3 zone. There, that was the, the scream you heard was from Kadugan because he felt like he got pushed off. And the official didn't call the foul call, instead he called it on the track. Well, Junior's finally healthy the last couple of years. And right now is playing like he's got this chip on his shoulder and he will be like that for the entire series. Well, I mean, coming up and changing Finch, Kadugan was just born that way. player who's just put his blood, sweat, and tears in the Canadian men's national team now has an opportunity to come out here, as you mentioned, healthy, an opportunity to show what he can do against Canada's best, against CPL, 80% Canadian, and there's another Canadian, Kyle Johnson, from downtown. He's been hot, another Scarborough native in CPL. He had a great career, and he's got two passports, British and Canadian. And all that experience with the British team has helped him. Shout out to Commonwealth. <laughs> and a guy scored 51 points in a game. Yes. I've never done that in layups. <laughs> I did that over a course of a weekend. Capers. Man, I mean, Fraser Valley just shooting the leather off it right now. Marcus Capers gives him that. That's really impressive because he's such a good defensive player and slasher. He starts knocking down shots. Woof. You're seeing the game plan for the Stings. They are using their size and getting some nice backdoor cuts off of the high low teams, but they keep giving up threes. The math isn't going to work out to their advantage. You cannot catch up to Xavier Moon in transition. Will touch pass time. That's the MVP. Taking it after kid Brody Clark, he just schooled him, Joe. Yeah, and you know what? Playing the high, that's not even a high low game, it's just an isolation So You're playing through him at the post or at the high post or the low post. And his, the result is he's going to finish the same way at the rim. And I think on his way back up the floor, he's up with the bench. Hey, I need a bit of a breather here. Kadugan taking it right at Moon, but sent back. Big time swap. That's your count. Just creeping up on the midway point of the second quarter. Edmonton having trouble offensively, but you have to give it to Fraser Valley's defense. Oh, it's all been about Fraser Valley's defense. You know, if we look at the shot charts of when they scored, Edmonton has scored a bunch in transition, but they haven't scored in the half court, except for offensive putbacks. Edmonton is, is trying their darnest to move it, but the bandits are locking on the ball. They Control the ball. They are bullying over screens. They won't let you get to the middle and create, and that's what the Bandits think they can always do with Xavier Moon. He just should be able to get free range. But different guys, their team, they've got players who are defending the ball so well. Uh, pretty impressive. I think the biggest thing as well, when you have a 17-point lead early in the game like this, when you see Fraser Valley continuing to find success from three-point range, it's 
very difficult for the Stingers to be able to get back into it. We've seen a lot of their offense has been through their size, their baseline cuts. That's only getting you two points. Yeah, and the other part that we're forgetting is all those 50-50 balls. Guys going out of bounds, throwing the ball back. Who's been getting all those? The Bandits. I mean, we Amy mentioned it, and I mentioned it uh, previous couple times as well. And we say this in the most positive way possible for Fraser Valley. It's interesting that they're known as the Bandits. I know it, it, it's a canine connection, but a bunch of dogs on this team that are out to, to show people that they're the underdogs. They know that they're written off coming off the last season, brand new squad. And this is a bunch of guys. A lot of them came through D2 ranks, college ranks, had to really work their way up and earn their stripes professionally. And not only are they playing hard, but they're playing crisp. Yes. So when you run your offense fast and crisp and solid, good things are going to happen. Got lucky on that last play because the Capitals came in, you know, maybe you know, not expecting to jump in the game like that. All of a sudden, there was a mismatch. And you had Ashlew in the post with Xavier Moon. Eric Ashlew's chances were in those situations. I mean, Olu back in the day had a lot of lift going down with the best of them. Maybe he lost a little bit of his bunnies, but he makes up for it now, obviously, with his veteran leadership basketball IQ that he brings to this squad. Also a guy who's earned his strengths professionally, knows what it takes to win in a condensed series like this. Nice take, Kyle Johnson. He's on one right now. I love the way that the Bandits just constantly move the ball up the court. We've never, we've never seen a situation there where they've walked the ball up the court. Leads up to 17, Fraser Valley. Come out, Bark. Who didn't get out for the rebound there, got bailed out by his teammates. Capos called for the foul. Just feels that the bandits in, in, in the full court always are looking to run downhill. Always looking to run downhill. Early transition screens, downhill attack. Interesting story there about Capos. When you look down and see he's from Miami, Florida, how did he end up at Deluxe? Yes. But it was his father, Tom Capos, who played at UPI, then went to St. Mary's, back-to-back -back championships with that St. Mary's squad, played with Rick Plato. He's now the head coach at Deluxe. Connection made. And you end up getting Capos here because why? Canada not only obviously becoming more known for basketball, but the academics, he wanted to take biology, sorry, marine biology, and a great connection there in Halifax. I think that, that your program is better than Lethbridge when it comes to marine biology. Probably a little closer to the water right there. Menega, no good. He had to really break a sweat. Drive. No good. Lots of contact, no whistle. They got numbers as Fraser Valley. Johnson, corner, classic. No. It's it's a good thing for the Stingers that Fraser Valley hasn't been able to pass all the open opportunities. They'd be up larger than they are. Still on that team. This is what Marcus Capers does. He is a long, athletic defender. He can fly, but what he does is he reads that passing lane as well as anybody. So not only do they put pressure on the ball, they put pressure on the passing lane. And that was out of the zone. Daniels, high post, onto the wing, no good. 
No rebound, Ashley, the class. Then again. A little mid-range game, Allen Johnson. 2.58 left, that was a Warren that was not supposed to go. If there's a way to score, Kyle Johnson's done it today. He showed us with the three, he showed us with the two, he's driving to the basket. to the bench. And to me, that's a great example of running your stuff crisply. Turning on that corner, you can watch Merrick come hard off the handoff. He sets it up, and all of a sudden, the rotation for the Stingers is late. Olu rolling the basket with no help. Ashley put in work overseas in the Far East. But you in a quiet gym, just listen. All you hear are bandits on offense, on defense, constantly, the bench, everything. They're communicating all the time. And they echo the call. The call's made and they, they pass it on to the next guy. Talked about it before, too, her bench is in front of their defense. Able to call things out things that aren't seen on the floor. There's Clark taking it at the vet, and the vet with the stop. Classic push it back the other way. Running off the Ashley screen, he slips it, and a big basket. They called the offensive foul on the off arm. That's a tough break, and but I, because I tell you, Ashley ran the floor, set a nice transition screen, which is the hardest screen to defend, and then on the roll. I think he didn't need, he didn't need the arm because he's so big and strong. I'll tell you this, after all the energy we saw Cameron Forte bring on the floor, he's bringing as much or more on the bench. He's loving what his vet Olu is putting on out there, but that basket called back due to the offensive foul call. Two minutes less than two minutes left in the first half. Really good footwork by Brody. And he used his size there. He buried capers on that. A healthy Brody Clark is fun to watch. Getting after it is Kamba. Look at the bandits. Just after it. Like a dog on a bone out there. Capers gets to the baseline. Kick out Classic. Waited a second. Yeah, I think he got a little. Uh, Freaked out on the close out there. Boom. Motor, no good. But great defensive transition by the Bandits again. They got back and they made it a three on three rather than a three on two. And look at the pass. Finish it off by Capers. I mean, they're knocking on the door at 60 with a minute left on the Fraser Valley Bandits right now. And all their transition is with five guys. Nobody's taking a rest in transition, standing back being a cheerleader. All five guys are running the floor. Peter McNeely started to warm up. And he's been the savior so far this half for the band, for the Stingers. Lost it on the dribble, and Moon felt blood and went after it. Moon getting fancy with it. McNeely, the land beyond, 25 seconds to go. The Stingers have got exactly what they needed at the end of the half. They just got to build up a little momentum and take some confidence, and they need to stop here. For everything that's went the Bandits' way, if the Stingers can get a stop here, they'll head into halftime feeling pretty good about the momentum. Newbie, no good. It's a 17-point lead for the Fraser Valley Bandits. We've talked a lot about.
with them, but you're the Stingers. What do you need to get changed heading into the second half, Joe? Well, you, you could build up some momentum in that last 30 seconds. You've got to stop them. You've got to stop their transition. And that's the first thing you like. You have to, you have to, and you have to match their intensity. We are awaiting our halftime interview. And it looks like it's going to be Kyle Johnson who will be joining Amy Otterberg. Pretty good pick if you ask me, Joe. Kyle, I mean, you could have picked any of the bandits, but really Kyle had it going from every part of the floor. Yeah, and with COVID, I'm, you're lucky you don't have to touch his hand because he's hot as heck. <laughs> <laughs> and we are going to join now Amy, who is joined by Kyle Johnson of the Fraser Valley Bands. Thanks, Jason. Kyle, 15 points at half, perfect from the field. What was the pregame message that it got you so fired up to play? It's been a long time since we played a game. Um, but we, we've been practicing really hard in training camp, and uh, we just wanted to come out, set the tone. Um, I think we did a good job of that. 59 points at half, that's an incredible pace. That's hard to sustain a whole game. So how do you lean on each other to keep that up? Um, we just can't be complacent. And we have a group of hungry players that we're just gonna push each other to um, just keep going harder. You know, we know it's a long, it's like gonna be a lot of games and, and consecutively, so we just gotta stay on each other and push each other. Well, you got a nice bet here at halftime. We appreciate your time, Kyle, and we'll be right back for more halftime action. Okay, I've been working like three jobs. Probably why I never see ya. Probably why I never have time for the fake friends I won't be ya. Oh God, I've been running now. Up early when the sun is out. Not setting out my own soul, but those real ones, they coming now. Oh look, who's reaching now? Old friends wanna feature now. They don't work, so they need it free. Ooh, you reaching now from the west side of that old town, but there's no show. So I go down to the open mic, show love to the real ones they know now. Some of y'all don't know now. In a couple months, you gonna find out. Been blowing up from the underground, and they stepping on a landmine now, and he know it's my time now, coming up, I'm on a climb now, everybody claim they been bottom, but it's looking like they took a time out, okay, I'm working on a Wednesday, then up again the next day, so and so is popping, man, I skip him like he leg day, kick it like I'm Pele, I never care what they say, put myself on Spotify, so every day my payday, that realness, don't feel this, but I've been sick, that illness, I've been fresh like Will Smith, since 94, man, I built this, stressed out, x out, missed calls from my ex now, but I'm staying focused in the lab, baby, I don't need your cause or your text now God say the boy blessed now Who am I to say Rondo? And the way that I sell ticks, they been calling me Rondo 23 in my prondo Finna ball like Lonzo Go and tell everybody talking stage Better be in that convo, uh It was a code 10, hard water again Worst part is, Claire was unaware Ah <clears throat> hey, Culligan, our water makes my skin and hair feel like I'm 90. Okay, are you 90? I'm not. Okay, secondly, how do you feel about high-efficiency water softeners from Culligan Water? What? And thirdly, how do you feel about smoother skin and luxurious hair? Goodly. I feel very good about that. That's the power of water. Stay soft, right? <laughs> you stay soft. <clears throat> good water doesn't just come to you. Oh, wait. Welcome back to the Meridian Center. It's a 59-42 lead for the Fraser Valley Advantage. Jason Tom here alongside Joe Rasso. And we have some more halftime coming up in a bit, Joe. But before we get there, you know, just generally your thoughts on Fraser Valley. Are you surprised? I, I feel like there was a, some concern about their offensive scoring possibly heading into this one. Man, I think I was snowed. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I said one of the keys for them is they have to find their identity. They knew what their identity was when they walked in. <laughs> they had they had no question. They just wanted to make sure they were keeping it quiet, that everybody else was second-guessing what it would be. And it was exactly what you thought it would be. They played with a chip on their shoulder. They played downhill on offense. They created a great half-court defense. They built, built it real well. They collapsed. They didn't give Xavier Moon opportunities to get to the middle of the, all the way to the basket. They said, okay, if you're gonna go up all the way in, you're gonna have to pass it out. Yeah. They took Travis Daniels out of the game a little bit. No, they, I, I was incredibly impressed. And that short training camp was, must have been some great, great basketball. Absolutely, halftime coming at you in just a few minutes. We'll go through some stats. And we'll also have Amy Otterberg talking to head coach Kyle Julius, somebody we've spoken about a lot. We'll hear from him 
in halftime. We'll be back after a short break. Most of our clients who come through our door and who are suffering from mental illness, they're feeling a sense of despair and a longing for help. Often, insurance companies are denying disability claims on the basis that there's insufficient medical evidence. We've represented hundreds of clients who suffer from anxiety or depression. We fight for our clients' right to receive the compensation they deserve. If you've been denied long-term disability, don't give up. We can help. Your long-term disability firm, Kotak Law. It's time to rep your CEBL pride, Canada. Exclusive New Era merchandise is now available on CEBL.ca. Buy your favorite hats, replica jerseys, t-shirts, hoodies, and more. Welcome to our game. Bandits fans, right now you can get 12% off 2021 season tickets by placing your $50 deposit before August 9th, 2020. Visit thebandits.ca and take advantage of this exclusive summer series offer. Welcome to a new basketball experience. Edmonton Stingers fans, get 12% off 2021 season tickets by placing your $50 deposit before August 9th, 2020. Visit cebl.ca slash the stingers and take advantage of this exclusive summer series offer. Welcome to a new basketball experience. What is 100 years? In 1920, Earhart Cook turned a passion for headwear into the new era cap company in Buffalo, New York. But everyone was making this kind of hat. So we came up with the big idea to make the best caps for the biggest sport. But something wasn't quite right. We wanted to show the logos with pride. And just like that, the iconic 5950 was born, changing the baseball cap forever. For the first time, the caps the pros wore on the field were officially sold in stores. And then something unique happened. Spike Lee called, the Spike Lee, and asked to have a red Yankees cap to match his jacket. We asked Major League Baseball, and they said, we had a chance to be disruptive. Spike's red cap launched sports headwear into a wider culture. Hip hop made it a staple. Creators made it their own. Colors, fabrics, patterns. It was more than just your favorite team. And a gold sticker on the visor became as iconic as the cap itself. And those four numbers, we think it's an original production number. We don't know for sure, but we love them. From courtside to Crenshaw, from the 50 to 5th, it shouted that this is who you were, what you repped, and where you lived. The world saw it and wanted it. Where were we? Staying true to our roots. Fans of all sports became fans of us. People liked what we were doing, so our brand grew, and we became more than just a cat. That's 100 years. We thank you. Enjoy what comes next. Welcome back inside the Meridian Center in St. Catharines, Ontario. To say a lot has gone into getting this summer series underway would be an understatement. The fact that we're sitting here today doing basketball games is a testament to everybody behind the scenes and one of the people obviously in front of the scenes who's a spokesperson for all the work that's going on, but he would tell you how much has been done by everybody else involved is Mike Morreale, the commissioner of the CEBL, and he sat down with Amy Otterberg for this interview. One of the big talking points leading into the summer series has been the Canadian talent and the amount and the quality has gone right up. I'm really excited, but why do you think some of our best basketball players are coming home to play? Well, last year, you know, we had a, we had the kind of proof of concept phase. Uh, we had a tremendous group of basketball players that played, no doubt about it. Many, many who are, are still playing here this year. But we started to see, you know, new agents, new players, higher name guys, 
just knocking on the door. And you know, we added about 75 new players this year. We have you know, over a dozen uh, senior men's national team players. We have uh, guys from all over the G League, from all from NCAA to U Sport, etc. And the quality of coaching's gone up, the quality of players has gone up. And I think we've proved to them, oh, these guys are kind of legit here. And you know, some of it is, is good karma and silver linings amidst everything that was going on. So all of our best players were home already in March where they wouldn't have been home till mid-May or even into June. And they weren't going back anywhere else, so we kind of had a really captive audience. And it's worked almost as, as we scripted it. And I'm, I'm really happy about that. And I really can't wait for those guys to return next year and get a feel for the whole experience, right? From their home markets and the whole, the whole shoot and match. And let's start here and get, get it off the ground and get it going, and then we'll, we'll take the next step. Earlier on today, I, Put your hand up, you know, how many of you guys have buddies that are playing basketball right now? It ain't happening. So this is like the platform. And I'm proud that it's a Canadian platform sprinkled in with some top international players. Uh, you know, they're showcasing not only what they do on the court, but how to do it safely and effectively. And I think we're gonna be uh, someone that people are able to go to from not only a pro sports level, but more importantly from an amateur sport, a minor sport level, and say, how do we pull this off? Because there's thousands of young kids that need to play and want to play basketball. Welcome back. We have Kyle Julius walking past us right now as Amy Oliver stands over on the uh, on the baseline waiting to talk to coach and you know a lot of positives coming out of that one but I'm sure Kyle Julius if I know him the way I do he didn't have a lot of positives to say in that half done. he wants to make sure that his guys stay on top of it. You know what they played such a good first half he didn't even want a half time to exist yeah. <laughs> you know he just said let's go play the second half that's what he really wants on that and I said Kyle always he does well with guys who have chips on their shoulders and something to prove. He feels he can coach those guys up. And he's done a great job of that. Now, can they keep that intensity up? Let's see. And we're going to throw it over now to Amy Otterberg, who's alongside Kyle Julius. Say hi for us, Amy. Hey, Jason. Thank you. Coach, that's an impressive start to the Summer Series for your squad. How do you keep them mentally engaged in the second half? I did not like the last couple minutes. Of I knew that. you were going to so say. I don't know. It. I didn't see anything impressive out there. We got. I told the guys it's a four-quarter game. In fact, it's really five, right? You got. You know. Now we've got a quarter and a half, and then a whole separate game. Uh, we got to play that Elon. So I, I didn't. You know, it was okay, but you know, we're halfway there. Not even. Okay, but the number doesn't lie. 59 points and half is pretty high octane offense. Are you confident or concerned that you can keep that up because uh, you know Edmonton's going to try to slow you down? I was told we we're too small. I was told, you know, we didn't have enough guys, so we'll see. But, you know, we, we start fighting here, and it's just the first quarter. It's the first half of the first game of a, a six-round fight, right? This tournament's six rounds, right? So you got to stay in the fight, and we'll see what happens. This is a good basketball team. They're well coached, so we got a long way to go. We always appreciate your time, Coach. Good luck in the second Andy. half. Okay, thank you. Back to you, Jay. <laughs> Kyle Julius answering those questions the exact way we would expect him to, Joe. Well, when he says, I was told, sounds like a president south of the border. I was told. I want to know who told him that because if you look at this roster, you know there's no quit on a lot of these guys their entire career. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting. We talked about the keys of the game heading into this one. Joe, I mean, I'm pretty sure Fraser Valley checked off all those boxes that you laid out. Absolutely, and you know they started early in the game by you know, playing through Camp Morgan and getting the ball in him on the offensive end, and then getting into their offense quickly. They do a great job of off the rebound, not just looking for the outlet, dribbling and then looking for the outlet. They don't slow anything up. They maximize a 24-second shot clock better than any team we've seen so far in the series. The one thing that Coach Julius did say is that he didn't like those last couple minutes, and something we pointed out as well. The Stingers got Adiga, Peter McNeil, got it going offensively, and they got some stops defensively. So on that side of the ball, on Coach Jermaine Small, what do you think his conversation was going to happen? Well, he's going to build on that last, but he's going to say, listen, guys, we've got to stop them in transition. We've got to do a better job on the ball. And he might be looking at how they're going to handle that post reaction. They might have to bring help because they're not real big inside either, just so that they're dealing with the Forte and the Olu situation a little bit better. 
Yeah, no, it's going to be an interesting second half. I really liked uh, Kyle Julius's take on things there um, because the thought that he looked at it like it was a five-quarter game, and I'm sure that's what he was talking to his players about. In you know, they had a bit of an extended training camp that didn't play yesterday. So to be able to look at it that way is very, very interesting because that that final four minutes is definitely different, and we've already seen it different than any other part of basketball. Kyle wants to win the battle of mental toughness, and he's already told his guys we've got to win these five quarters that he's talking about, and he's been fighting that. Kyle did a great job, and like you said, he started when he was in Taiwan with the Zoom calls and starting you know, getting his guys prepared mentally. Well, they came out already mentally, but now this second half, totally different story. You know that the Stingers are gonna understand what type of fight that they're in for, but the other thing that Coach Julius said, six round fight, just to get into the playoff rounds. The Dugan with the round. Welcome to Vivian. He had a hot start. Got it done down low. Cameron Forte working on Daniels. Daniels coming out. And he said, give me Forte, coach. Let me put a stop up on him. The one thing that Daniels can do on Forte is he can stay to the ground and react to his shot because of his length and his ability to jump. There's the Steelers bench getting up as Diawara turns a defensive stop and two points the other way. on the wing. Johnson with 15 on a perfect shooting performance in the first half. Xavier Moon, that was clean. Xavier Moon didn't quit on that play. He chased it on, and he kept coming back and getting them. Going to work, Xavier Moon. That's going to be me. And that is a timeout, 58 seconds in the third quarter. Kyle Julius wants to talk things over. So now, two most important players coming into the game. You would see, I talked about Xavier Moon and Travis Daniels. So let's look at look Xavier here. He takes the basket, he's really good in short spaces, attacks the rim with this all the way, and he's finding a way to finish right there. Went in with the uh, left hand off of glass. Very interesting to see Frazier Valley, you know, Coach Julius said he didn't like his final two minutes. It's now stretched into the first minute of this third quarter. And it doesn't look like he's going to change his personnel. Just something he wanted to talk over. Maybe due to, it's a bit of a matchup change there with Daniels on Forte down low. And, we said, and I said that they're going to have to find a different way of defending the post. I thought maybe bringing help, but what they did was made a personnel change. They didn't want Daniels to start the game on Forte because they were worried about him fouling, getting in foul trouble. Now they're, at, they're in a desperate situation. They've got to put their best defensive lineup on the floor and get their best matchups. Yeah, when you're looking at the foul situation, Marcus Capers is the only one with three fouls. And the Stingers in very, very good position when it comes to fouls. Only one player with more than one, so that gives Coach Small a little bit more flexibility on who he wants to throw at the different players. And I think it's a great idea because I think it gets Travis Daniels in the game. He may not have got the touches that he wanted in the first half, but now he's a, a key focus on the defense. by Baker on that. Made small thing. I play games behind him. Wing three. Big time shot. Real good execution on both solid screens. Probing the middle there. Bombay. Yeah, that was that was a combo with the huge defensive rebound on one end and big time three on the other. Just like that, it leads down to ten. Transition. Baker. Oh, it's open again. Come up from downtown. The Stingers are back in the game. So all those 50-50 plays, little scrambles now. 
stingers have been taking advantage of that. Now the hands in the passing lane, pressure on the basketball. I was complimenting the, the bandits getting the ball up the court quickly, but it's hard to get the ball up the court quickly when you're being guarded like that. So Xavier Moon and, Zin and Travis Daniels have made a huge difference defensively already in the second half. I like it, what you're seeing out there between the Stingers and Fraser Valley. You can wear the latest gear exclusively from New Era, the official merchandise partner of the CEBL. Visit the store at cebl.ca to pick up your favorite team gear. Newton working on move. Fires it to Forte. Gets closed up pretty quick. Menega fires it into the corner. Step back three, Kyle Johnson, no good. That was Johnson getting his own rebound. He was fading away on that three. He was still the first one there to get on the glass. Sometimes you, as the shooter, know that you're going to miss. And so the advantage is you. Dugan. Kick up. No good. Baker got away with a bit of a shove on the back. Fraser Valley now just completely ice cold on offense. Dugan steps in and draws a shot. There's a lot of similarities between Junior and Kyle Lowry. In taking that charge, Junior's hit the floor his entire life on both ends, but he does a real good job of reading the guy out of control and he steps in there and he anticipates him. Kiyawara heads to the bench with three. In comes Zika Peter McGill. Great spin. And Baker was trying to help, but he was helping from the high end, and Forte saw that. Great spin. Oh, look at Kadugan with the hand. Menica spinning. Great handle on the ball. Johnson up top. Forte taking it off the dribble. Quarter three. That is much needed as Capers are downtown. Fraser Valley just did not have a goal for range here as a big time shot. And Cam Forte made a nice read there, saw that Daniel spaced off a little bit, didn't force it, and he found the open shooter. And he got good hands there. Hope you win. Look at momentum, how it changed a little bit. Edmonton had a chance down nine, they get called on the charge, bring it to seven, and all of a sudden five quick points, and now we've got the student, you know, Here's the band, it's up 12. Yep. Look, you're looking for how the left of the screen. Instead, McNeely launches. Transition game, this is what they did in the first half, Fraser Valley. Forte, I like the mid-air theatrics there. I loved it, and the run-up with four guys on it. You know, bad shots, bad long shots lead to run-ups all the time. Forte with the swipe, push it back. Kadugan, Junior Kadugan, feeling it right now. And he wants everyone to know. Kadugan, you think, you know, I knew he was looking forward to this series. You can tell right now he's gassed up. The two guys have been on the ground a little bit. Yeah. And I think Jordan Baker's thrown a couple elbows and he's received a couple elbows. Going to reintroduce the third member of our crew, Amy Otterberg. What you got? Listen, I had the opportunity to talk to Coach Julius early this week about some of the guys he was most impressed with. And the first guy he said was Junior Kadugan. He said, I've known him for a while. Right now, he looks as good as he ever has, not just in terms of his body and being in shape, but also his leadership capabilities. You're seeing it on the court. We're all seeing it, Coach. Yeah, I believe uh, when it comes to Junior Kadugan, it's somebody, just a player that anybody involved in Canadian basketball community has really watched grow up, right? Like before our very eyes, we've seen seen the good in the bad and come from that and you know a kid at the age of 14 or 15 who's still learning themselves as a human being but now seeing the junior can do 
being the veteran now, I mean, what a long way he has come. He is a beloved character in the Marquette basketball family. One of the top, leaves Marquette, one of the highest uh, yeah, amount of wins per, on a team, on any player in Marquette he history. He has a great history of players. He had four great years at Marquette. And Buzz Williams now, the coach at Texas A&M, loves Junior, just loves his character, and talks about Junior all the time. So he's left an impression uh, as a player in university. And as a pro, he's just a bulldog. And he has played at the highest levels when we talk about the NCAA Sweet 16, Elite 8, and playing the role of floor general on those teams. And his answer to the national call every time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Perfect example of the type of guy that the CEL is all about. Somebody who has the opportunity here in the summertime to be able to advance his game. And he is having himself quite an afternoon here. Kyle Johnson up the top, running off the street. Kate Corner Menega. That is good. Jahens Menega, the Creighton graduate. Back on the baseline, somebody we haven't talked about a lot. So that stops an 11 0 run, much needed. Lead is back up to 18, just like that. I love the way Chris Fowler was pushing and pushing and pushing. They pushed themselves out of that little wall early in the quarter just because they didn't change who they were. They just kept pushing and grinding. to a five seconds, he just gives it up. Forte, just letting them know that you're not gonna get a basket under and have to do something else. Well, some players have to know, the referees are not calling the second foul, they call the first one. If you're gonna go up there, someone's gonna give it to you. You know, we're still very early. This is the uh, final two teams getting their first of the series. But there's going to be guys who get to know each other pretty quickly in these games, and if they end up matching up when it comes to the playoff time, uh, it's uh, you know, a lot of bad blood's going to uh, show pretty quickly. Yes. And they're all one floor away from being roommates. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be uh, quite a uh, release of the pressure valve when it's all said and done. Right now, these guys are just relishing the fact that they're back on the floor. Last open, three, no good. Good poke away, but fingers maintain. Good ball movement, Clark. Three is good. Well, you hit it right on the head. Good ball movement. It started with the decoy. Peter McNeely throwing that skip pass, causing the closeout. All of a sudden, one more pass, you got yourself an open three. Is that just the look, or is that a little bit of the game, too? He's got lots of skills. Very impressed, put up two. And again, Ooh, in and out, but look at that. Guy in for the foot back. And that's what Marcus Capers does. He just gets it. He's got great hang time. Long defender, real good slasher, but an incredibly solid offensive rebounder. Daniel, now, trying to get it back to Daniels because he's got Klassen on him. But wide open, Clark back to back threes, still good. Capers does a nice job. A little light on the weight, puts his body on him. Picking up a foul. Copying my words out here. Oh, McDougan again. From downtown, Kadukin is on one right now. Almost got a smile out of his head coach, Kyle And Merrick Palmer's gonna find you, right? What a great pass on the drive. Nice take. 
left-handed player who can put it down on his right hand and does everything real strong and deliberate. Real good finish by Jordan. He can play through contact. That's one of his strengths. Maker and Daniels quite a duo down there, and they're starting to get fired up. Still stuck 16 the right now. And you know what, and it's a great play because he caused a little separation with it, right? Put, a lot of guys you see do that, and that's a Kyle Lowry play. Where you put the shoulder in, you cause a little separation. No good for McNeely because Capers did a great job of bothering Kadugan now. Smart move, passing it up. And Klassen, Klassen, oh, there, Klassen has his band itself off the bench. That was a good example with this unit on the floor right now of spacing it and playing five out. The fact that Jimmy knocked down a couple of shots, all of a sudden now you're all spaced out yeah. and it just gave class in that lane that he needed. And that's when we talk about the basketball, basketball IQ and maturity we're seeing from the I mean, six years ago he probably would have launched that shot maybe. You know what I mean? Back in his high school days he would have put it up as a heat check. Smart, ran off the line, ball movement, results in another two. Back by the length of Tavaria Nix. Yeah, one thing that Kyle did tell me about this team, he said Tavaria Nix has a lot of ability and length, and he's impressed. So you put him and Marcus Capers on the floor together. This bucket, they need them right now to the Stingers. Nice balance, open J. And a Jordan Baker steal there, eh? He doesn't get the rebound, but he puts his head in there and he knocks it off somebody's feet. He's been doing that his entire career. seconds watch the inbounder oh no we were in bonus I apologize the 
I look at the at the foul sheet there, and the fact that Fraser Valley, as tough as they play, only had two. I thought, now that can't be right, yeah, yeah. and I was confused by that. I think uh, Jermaine Small was under the same mindset. Free throw, Baker pushing it. Baker. Ah! It's an 18-point lead for Fraser Valley. Fourth quarter action, including four minutes of Elam time. Stay with us, folks. we got a great ending coming your way from St. Catherine's Ontario. Elam ending is upon us, and they take the timeout to set the target score. up into the air, gets it to go! Not there, Bukhar in the corner for three. Neo Bukhar at the buzzer, drains it, and the Niagara River Lions get out of here with a 93-92 victory. Just over a minute into this fourth quarter again, 
Just over four and a half minutes of the going to Elam ending time with a target score. We'll get into that later. Paducah crossover forces the contact and has a big smile at Brody Park. And yeah. Young Buck, you got a lot to learn still. Yep, and that's exactly what he was thinking. He was thinking that and he said, okay. Then I was there once, Brody. Kadugan at the line shooting the free throws. Junior with 11 points, three boards, a couple of assists as well. Papers still lights out from the floor in this game. But again, we talked about it time and time again. And it's the offense that's coming off that defense. And it's the balance. Five guys in double digits yeah. after the end of the third quarter. Here we go, a little defensive change. Oh, outlet. Nix leaked out. And he finishes. And that's something with, in, in, a, in a series like this, one area you have to work on is defense and transition. And it's hurt Edmonton tonight. And that's something that they'll get better at as they go through this series. And Just about, we talk about it all the time, Coach, little two, mi two minutes increments. And you want to be able to win every one of those two minutes. And that's exactly what we was talking about at the end of that first half. And there's, there's some timeouts to give here. So what you're going to find a situation, like Coach Julius doesn't have one to give, but you're going to find the next timeout, we're going to try to play to the four minute mark. Everybody's looking at that four minute mark as zero. This is what Kyle talked earlier about playing five quarters. If you're the Stingers, opportunity to chip away at that lead lead into that time. And a small lineup here for Edmonton with Cam Forte on the court. It's different playing small when he's not on the floor. What Edmonton is learning about Cam is he's very left-handed on the take, but he can finish with both hands. And there you saw Brody, who's a bright kid, realize I've got to take it out of his left hand. Well, that's the other thing you're going to see. Like, there's only so much advanced scouting you can do heading into this series. And, you know, that's where it comes down. Head coaches, coaching staff, what they can see from game to game. Brody Quarter three, cash money. So when you switch a defense and out of bounds on there, you went that two, three zone. That full reversal got the zone to have to rotate. And the last rotation was in the corner, and Cody was open for it. Locked and loaded. Oh, deeper move, picking pockets. Kadugan busts his way through. Foul called. It's going to go back the way of the Stingers. Amy Otterberg, check it back in, third member of our crew. Coach, you mentioned Brody Clark being really smart to take away that left hand. Well, you know what? A little bit academics, too. He's a civil engineering graduate. That's what he studied at Alberta. I talked to him. He's actually went back and is in the middle of his MBA, put it on pause so he could go play pro basketball. But he's a really smart guy. And I asked, you know, what's your dream job after hoops? And he said, building high rises. So uh, the guy's just cerebral on the court and off. I think, you, I, think, I think Amy was talking to you, Coach. Well, I heard her, but he <laughs> comes from great stock. Norm was a national yes. team captain, Bonaventure captain. He's got a brother that's a doctor, too. Must have one smart mother. Santa, Santa Clara. Nice pass. again. Carving out space. Making it happen for the Bandits. We're back up 20, 6.39 to go. 
He won at Camp Forte's last game. He dropped 41 33 minutes. He is a natural scorer. Oh, Clark drop off. Oh, we almost had our first poster of the summer series, but it, no good. Boom, gets it back. Taking it into the teeth of the D. Baker trying to tip it in. No good. Bandits coming away with it. They called it. Foul there in transition. Uh, that was scrappy play, but lots of hustle. Joe, we're back tomorrow for two more games. I hope you're not sick of it yet. Now. We've got two more to go. Tomorrow, we'll be back. We got, sorry, we're talking Fraser Valley and the Rattlers on July 28th. That's the next game for Fraser Valley. And then you got the Stingers tomorrow against the Blackjacks. Yeah, great game tomorrow in that you've got two teams that right now maybe not have been in, brought their best effort and people are thinking very high things of both of them, so they may have to regroup. The hard part for Edmonton is now, they got to come off a of back-to-back. Yeah, back-to-backs are going to be tough for everybody. We saw it, the River Lions today were you know, without their starting point guard and, and, and when it comes down to it, and that's just, we talked about the relation to kind of FIBA basketball. You need that depth, and on top of that, you need the interchangeable parts. But one thing we haven't talked about yet is just matchups. And a lot of these teams, it's just different matchups when they match up against each other and obviously positionally player against player. Yeah, absolutely. But the one matchup we haven't seen in the, in the four games so far is we haven't seen a team that match each other you know, mentality with toughness. Yes. Every game we've seen, somebody was just a little bit tougher than the other, their opponent. And it didn't become a technical win. It became a win of, you know, imposing your will on them. Yep. And in, in all four games, we've seen that. And I think that will kind of change because people find themselves. And I think as you see, as it goes along, people will match the intensity. If they don't, they won't survive. Well, and I think the one thing that we haven't talked about yet as well is, I mean, these are guys that had a seven to eight day training camp. They haven't played at game level speed for months now. And, and they're turning it up on the brightest lights. And there is another tip in. Corte asking for the score table to make sure they put him down for a rebound as well. Absolutely, and, that's, and that he wants to make sure. That's an absolutely great call. He wants his double-double because he's up to 20 two points and nine boards. He wants his 20, 20, 2010 game. Wants to make sure he gets it recorded properly. Again, for the box scores, you can go on cebl.ca. Sometimes the final box scores take a bit because of the Elam ending changing things up when you relate the Elam ending alongside our FIBA rules. And we're just a Minute 35 away from those final four minutes. The first whistle inside of four is when the Elam ending will take hold. The Bandits, you know, withstood the storm that the Stingers brought here to start the second half, and they're back in a comfortable lead. Corte to the baseline. Yeah, he's so... He's so cagey in there, and because he can do many things with his right hand, he just reads it and reads it and reads it. I don't know if one guy's gonna be able to stop in the post because he's so good at it. You may have to bring someone, or at least bluff by bringing, by bringing someone. I'll tell you this, Daniels is Forte's shadow right now. Good D by McNeely. They called him on the foul. And that's, and part of that is Kyle Johnson who could sell it, eh? He knew it, he knew it was close and he knew it was down at the end of the shot clock and he was trying to sell it and he, and he won it. So hard if you're a coach because that's exactly what you want your defender to do. Get out there, put the hand up. Johnson at the line, hits the first. And we got a technical call on Jermaine Small. Just having a conversation with Forte about different thoughts he had about yeah. the, uh, I think he was talking about the, uh, the electronic whistles, yeah. is what I think his concern was. 
So we've had we've got our first tee of the of the series. Yes. And it's a tough one to get because you're getting near Elam time. Like every point now, you yeah. just put yourself deeper in a hole. Yeah. I think the first thing about it being in a hole, right? Stop digging. You like the way they heard that. Hey, minute and a half, fellas. Minute and a half, fellas. That idea of five quarters is instilled. Yep. And like we saw in the last game, it doesn't matter what the score is heading into it. It's a learning process of how you're going to play. You have to see how your players are going to play in the final four minutes. And then you need to be able to use that as a teaching point heading into your next game. Absolutely. And it shows that they believe in it. You are. Rocking the baby to sleep on the crossover and finishing softly in the lane. The big bucket. But uh, don't look now. The Bandits have already cracked the century mark with uh, 5-10 left in the fourth quarter. In under 35 minutes. And Kyle's trying to tell us, I don't know if we can score. I don't know if we can score. He's going to run out of mind games to play, I think. It's only game one. Cadugan's cooled off a little bit on the shooting stroke. Still running things, though, for the Bandits. Ooh, slipped. Got it back out. Nix. Oh, great hands. Peter McNeely. Oh, taken back by Cadugan. They're going to call it a kickball. Yeah, and good play by Junior there. He, he kind of read that, and he knew that he had to bail his team out on that. Good read. start I believe they're trying to get that rectified shout out to everybody here at the Meridian Center coming back together after a lengthy break getting things going here for the summer series obviously uh, it's been quite a different time for everybody and getting back into the quote unquote office is a change for everybody, but everybody's done an outstanding job here in St. Catharines. Just day two of this summer series that will run till August 9th. The entire schedule can be found on CEBL.ca. Of course, we will have a number of games on CBC Sports nationwide here in Canada. You see here the change in balls. The ball was wet. We've got four balls in play at the CBL Summer Series here in that they're all disinfected, they're all ready to go, and they've been four game balls so that we have, if the situation occurs or somebody touches the ball I'm not comfortable with, we just change it up. Yes, I saw one of the players go over and try to take one for warm-ups, and uh, he was directed away rather quickly. Forte, working on Peter McNeely. Vivier, kick out, Kadukin. Wing three, no good. Rebound for the Stingers. 4.15 to go. Knocking on the door of Elam. Time. Boom. Big shot by Moon. Cuts it to 20. Vivier. And the Stingers chose not to call a timeout before Elam time. Because they didn't want, they thought they had a little bit of flow going. And uh, Kyle Julius instructed to Vivier to foul him in order to get into that again. A lot of, a lot of different interesting things go into that. And, and I'm sure that was something that, hey, if we're up big and we're knocking on the door of Elam time, let's get to it as quickly as possible. Yeah, absolutely. So now he's he's ready to go there. He's got a plan. And he may have a lineup, a different lineup if they're behind, a lineup if they're ahead. And the big thing that the Elam time that we're finding is for the teams that are ahead is take advantage of turnovers. 
because the turnovers turn around and allow you to get easy scores. And uh, as we always do at Elam time, we remind everybody about everything that goes into it. Okay, so Elam time started with the first stoppage under four minutes. We have a target score thrown up there right now, and the target score is 111. That will become our target score. The game clock's top and it gets reset. Uh, first team to reach it or surpass it wins the game. There's going to be a winner, a game-winning shot. It could be a free throw, a layup. And a couple rules come into effect when we're talking about Elam time that you should be aware of. One is if you get scored upon, you can substitute. And that's really important because teams will use that offense to defense. And after a timeout, because you have two timeouts maximum going into Elam time, you have the choice if you call a timeout to put the ball in the front court or the back court. And then any foul, this is a tough one. If you foul off the ball as the ball's being inbounded, there's a huge penalty because it's an unsportsmanlike foul. That means two shots in the ball. So you got to be really noticeable not to commit a bad foul in that situation. So the target score is up, 111. Edmonton's thinking all we got to do is get 21 points and stop them from scoring. 11, I believe, in the short history of Elam ending time here in the CBL. I believe that's the largest score, the largest target score that we've had. Well, when you start putting up 85 in the third quarter, we're going to have a huge target score. So what happened is it ended up on a foul here, so we were going into bonus. So what we've got a situation is the referees realized it was bonus. They've now gone to a free throw. It's like a uh, Sun Sportsman, like free throw. He'll take two shots with nobody in the key. And on the second one, make or miss, the ball will be inbounded out of bounds. Gotcha. Now, this was supposed to happen before the timeout. Okay. Everybody's learning something new. So, so, so what will happen is, some people get confused with the Elam time and the TPT. So this should have happened before the timeout, and it'll be adjusted. He'll get two shots, and the target score will still be 111 because the team that's losing is at the free throw line. It won't affect the target score. It'll just get them a little closer. That's important. Yes. Just, just so we know that the, that the 111 does not change, that is going to be the target score. It's just a matter of how many the Stingers are going to need to get to that 111 to pick up the win, but that is going to be one heck of a comeback for the Stingers. But also, as you had mentioned, points scored could be very important in this series as well. Absolutely. So in the Elam time, what you're talking about is you want to make a game of it because, again, it's always point four. Amy, have you been able to make any sense of this? Or are you going to talk about something else? Uh, no, well, just <laughs> worth noting also with Elam, don't forget the game that we saw earlier today. Saskatchewan had a pretty nice lead going into that final frame, and it got really sticky. Now, of course, they still won the game, but afterwards, talking to Rashawn Brown, I asked him, I said, what happened out there? And his advice moving forward would be, listen, we, we played not to lose the game. A and so I, I don't think we're going to see that from this Bandits team. They, pretty, they seem pretty locked on and focused but I guess here we go. Yeah, it's definitely a new world for everybody. That is for sure. And I think it's it's one of those things that, you know, you always say not to play to the clock, not to play to the score, but it's kind of hard to tell your guys not to play to the score, but there is a score to get to. You find me a sports psychologist that can teach people, give you the secret of how to play not to lose and how to play to win, that's a wealthy sports psychologist. Like we do it all the time in all sports. You hear prevent defense, and when you hear it, you're thinking, oh no, that's the last thing it's going to do. The nice thing about Elam is, because the clock doesn't affect you, play your game. Play your style, your game. Oh, Dugan took it hard. And a turnover, Stingers will get it back. The great thing about Elam time is you've taken a major factor out of the game, and that's the, that, that's the clock. You need strong possessions on both ends, and you can get in the game or win a game. The thing I have to get used to is the uh, the red lights up on the uh, on the backboard. <laughs> Transition, Vivier. 
No good. Corte battling clean strip. Vivier, no good. And here come the Stingers. Move. Mid-range game is good. That's a layup for him. He is a great pull-up jump shooter at the elbow. Does a nice job of holding his momentum and getting lots of lift. Vivier. Off the Forte screen. Vivier, back rim. Top of the back rim. All of a sudden, Edmonds just playing loose and free. Forte spins on Daniels. Wow, he has had his way today. And I want to see his shot chart because all of them are inside that circle. Daniels, the rebound, he beat Forte down the floor. Corner three. Wow, Xavier Jones, just so easy. It's like, it's consistently now in all three games, when Elam time hit, the team that's been trailing has, has come out strong. And it gives them a little bit of life. I think that's what helps them. But the team that's won the two games, so the, the well, three games so far, is a team that's leading. And eventually, they just wear you down. The one thing you can't do if you're behind is you can't turn it over and you can't foul. You can't give up easy baskets. Kahush checking back in, adding some more size to the Stingers lineup. Forte, good on the first. Now the big difference between this and the TPT, the TPT if you get fouled on the ground in bonus, it's one and the ball. Here they've adapted all the FIBA rules, so it's two shots. Fraser Valley now five points away from taking this game. Boom, mid-range. Couldn't get the roll on that one. Good battle by Daniels. Cleaning up the mess. Travis Daniels been doing it for a couple of years now in the CBS. Frazier Valley's doing a good job of running deliberate action, deliberate sets. Lots of movement off the ball. Kadugan now battling Moon. Kick out. Menega. Good head fake. Got fake freed up Menega, but he couldn't get it to go. Daniels to Peter McNeely. Lots of contact there. Yeah, and I think Travis on that transition, if he looked on the other side, I think he had an alley oop to Mamba on that. But what Edmonton did a nice job here on that high ball screen that, uh, that the Bandits ran because they didn't respect Forte as a shooter. So they doubled on the ball and made Forte, he popped. But they didn't respect him there. But if he rolled, that's a whole different situation. That was Minica with the hard foul. Peter McNeely hits the first from the charity stripe. One oh six ninety one with one eleven being the target score here for the Elam ending. CEBL adapting it for the first time in this summer series. Kadugan, I think he was surprised how open he was when he got past Kapos and kiss off a glass is good. I think he was surprised he had Kapos on him. Moon, surveying the defense and turns it over. Menega, back the other way. Forte looks him off. And finishes again. Forte has put in work here at the Meridian Center. And that's, a, that's taking advantage of the turnover. We are now one bucket away for the Bandits. Oh, Junior got laid out by the Daniels screen. Capos there for the tipping. I called Daniels early in the game. I said he's a heck of a screener. So now free throw, three pointer, two, whatever you got wins the game. This is a good idea. Forte. Oh, couldn't get it to go. It seems right that he would have been the one to cash it. Adika, Peter McNeely, no good. Oh, and Kadugan got called for the foul on the slap down. And the one thing when you're behind on this, you don't have to rush up. When you have a dance of two on one, three on two, 
the two points are just it's like don't settle. You're not fighting the clock, so you don't need the three. You take what they give you, and that'll help you. Now another strategy that a lot of teams are doing when they're ahead in this situation where you've got a 17 point lead, you may foul early so that you don't give up a three. You don't want the team to use threes to get you. You might send them to the free throw line rather than them get a possession where they get a three point play. No good. The Bandits with a chance to end things here. Cadugan into the corner. Hard take, but it's combo with the SWAT. So every day there's going to be somebody with the game winning bucket. Could be a free throw, could be a layup. I'm sure Beck Chris is really interested in who it is. <laughs> Kadugan working on Moon. Junior Kadugan has it stripped by Xavier Moon. Transition game. Daniels hits from the land beyond. Now 97 for the Stingers. Now that's a great transition three because he had rebounders prepared there in case he missed it. Handoff. Menega. Johnson. Kyle Johnson. No good. And this is where everything, everybody gets a little tighter with the game on the line, right? Yep, and this plays a big role in the plus minus as we go along down here in, in the series. But see, there's an example right now, up 13, the foul, you put in the line for two, but it stops a possible transition. Now they've got more up, they have to score more to get you. Kyle Julius wants to draw something up. He's asking his guys to run in. He knows it's almost done, but he wants to draw something up here off the make or miss free throw to finally put this one to bed. I think Cam Forte is going to get the ball and he's going to make the decision. And he's going to either, either he's going to take you one on one or he's going to look for the open man. But I think they're going to go through Cam. Probably be a good person uh, to go through. He's the leading scorer in the game for both teams. Got over the 20 point mark on a 2010 game. Now the one thing you can do here, not to show your hand, if there's, you can sub, if you're behind, you can substitute. If you're a team that gets scored on. So if Fraser Valley didn't want to put a certain player on the court right now, they could put him on if, if the basket's made. Olu Ashua out there having a chat with Forte. Olu played some key minutes earlier, but has not seen the floor here in the second half. But seeing some things from the bench. Kamba at the line, shooting free throws. And this has been important for Edmonton because they're playing their best basketball in Elam time. And this moves into tomorrow as they get ready for Ottawa if, they, if they're unsuccessful in coming back here. Good to go. So what do the Bandits have drawn up? They got Klassen back out there. See, with that timeout, Game on the line. Johnson. Menega. Classic. Fresh off the bench. Capos, all kinds of length. Outlet to Kamba. He gets it to go. Stingers aren't going away. Real good play by Capos there coming off his man. Look at the early work by Travis Daniels. Look how far out he put Forte. And it's Capos again. What a key substitution for Jermaine Small. Throwing Capos in, he has been a defensive presence there the last couple trips down the floor. Kyle Johnson set back by Xavier Moon. Man, the intensity that Edmonton has showed here, yeah. right? The resilience, you know, they, they haven't quit. That's impressive. 11 on the shot clock. Menega wide open for three. Shot hands Menega. 
Hits from downtown. Elam ending is over, and the Fraser Valley Bandits pick up their first win of the CEBL Summer Series. Every team now has a game under their belt, and that's important because now it's an opportunity for every other team to be able to scout every one of their opponents heading into tomorrow. And it was, uh, it was definitely uh, the Cameron Forte show, and he'll be joining Amy Otterbert in just a short moment, but I think when it comes down to it, both these teams learned a lot about themselves. They learned a lot about the Elam ending and what to do, what not to do, and, and right now we're going to uh, send it over to Cameron Forte who's alongside the third member of our crew, Amy Otterbert. Thank you, Jason. Cameron, dominating debut here in the Summer Series 28 and 10. But what did you enjoy most about being out there now that we're back to ball? Basketball, uh, you know, it's been a long five, six months since players have played basketball, so just getting out there and competing at a high level is really looking forward to. I know Coach Julius probably isn't going to be too happy about the last couple minutes there, but take that out of the way. You guys made a statement. But in your own words, what's the mentality of the team coming into the Summer Series? just feel disrespected. We have great players on our team and I think they counted us out from the jump, but I think that's what everybody on this team wants. So we just out here fighting and everybody on our team is a dog. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to fight and we're going to get some wins. Congratulations on the tone you set today, Cameron. We'll go back to you, Jason. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Joe, an outstanding second day of basketball. What is your, uh, what is your general thoughts after watching these two games here today? Man, it's, it's a little bit like yesterday. It's that you have to bring it. You have to bring it. The talent level, there is parity in talent throughout the series. But it's who's prepared that day. And if you're not, you know, you're going to get kicked. And what we saw today is we saw teams impose their wills on, the, on, other, on their opponent and never let them in the game. Tomorrow, we will be back here live from the Meridian Center. We have the Hamilton Honey Badgers taking on the Guelph Nighthawks starting up at 5 p.m. Eastern here on cbcsports.ca. And then we have the Stingers back taking on the Ottawa Blackjacks. Both those matchups very interesting, especially the Stingers and Blackjacks. Ottawa, not a great debut the other day, and the Stingers picking up this loss. That's going to be two teams that want to get back on the winning side of things. Those are two teams that people felt were going to be, well, a lot of people felt were going to be real strong. I did, and I still think they're going to be real still strong. Time, yeah. And I think they're just going to get better. And I think both those teams are teams that will improve after the loss. Like, you know, every loss here hurts. But if you don't improve after the loss, then it really hurts. You definitely got to move on. Every game is played in a vacuum. You got to forget it. Keep going and learn from it. Thank you for joining us here. For Amy Otterberg, Joe Rasso, I'm Jason Tom. For everybody here at the Meridian Center, thank you for tuning in. We will see you tomorrow in about 24 hours for some more basketball, the CEBL Summer Series. Thank you for joining us.